Good morning. Good morning. Welcome home to the church in the gardens, to all who are here in the sanctuary, and to all who join us online. On this Reese and Restoration Sunday, November 10, it is such a blessing to be with all of you. Our minister, Reverend Dr. Frederick Waitman, and our music director, Dr. Sunny Nabel, uh, the greeters, uh, and Rama, who is in charge up there, and me, Nofi, down here, your liturgies, and uh, Cheryl and Sue, all the people who serve the Lord today, we are all so happy to see you. For the first time visitors and newcomers, we welcome you to place your name and contact information on a visitor card in the pew rack in front of your seats. Please place it on the offering plate or give it to the greeters. And if you drive here, please make sure to get a parking pass from the greeters to avoid being booted. And this is very important. Please remember to silent our cell phone. Now please listen to today's announcements. The church office and facility will be closed on Monday, November 11, in observance of Veterans Day. Bible study class will continue on this Tuesday evening at 7 and Wednesday morning at 10. And you will see in the bulletin's announcement for Sanctuary Cleanup Day on Saturday, November 9th. It happened yesterday and we are so thankful for all the work and fun. It was a great success. And please mark your calendar. The Church in the Gardens will host the Interfaith Thanksgiving Service on Sunday, November 24th at 4 p.m. in the community house. And there will be a sign-up sheet at the back so we can bring our favorite dessert to, uh, be, to participate in the event. Gifts of foods are urgently needed for distribution through our Central Queens partners. Please bring canned goods and non-perishable donations every Sunday to the basket at the sanctuary entrance. Thank you. And for all the people who need prayers for healings, for those who are grieving or suffering loss of any kinds, and for those who live in residential care, Reverend Fred will pray for you in the pastoral prayer later in this service. And now, Reverend Fred will lead the opening prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to the Church in the Gardens on this interestingly and timely named Risk and Restoration Sunday. Our opening hymn, along with our readings, prayers, and all we do set the tone for this service and for our lives. We wake up and we move throughout our whole day and our whole lives with our hearts and minds and whole beings set on Jesus Christ, creator, redeemer, healer, and friend. And so we pray. Bless us, O oh God, in our time together here, gathered in your name, held in your love, and be with us as we leave this place to live our whole lives in your wisdom and grace, to experience and to share your good news for us and the world, and let everybody say, Amen. Amen. If you are able, please rise and join me in the call to worship found in our bulletin. Wisdom is radiant and unfading. Easily discerned. Let all seek your wisdom, O God. Good morning, everyone. Let us all turn now to our Black New Century hymnal, hymn number 85, I Woke Up This Morning. Exactly right. <laughs>
join me for the prayer of confession and renewal as found in your bulletin. Forgive us, loving God, for all the ways we move away from you. To embrace self-righteousness instead of grace. Despair instead of hope. Show us your love anew. Move us in the agents of your love. And keep our hearts and minds stayed on you. Be with us in this brief time of silent reflection. And be with us as we sing. Siblings in Christ of every shape and size, color and status under the sun, all made in God's image. You are children of God and siblings of Christ and don't let anyone or anything tell you otherwise. Your surest way to be sure of your relationship with God is to let the love of God and the grace of God fill you and make you whole. That's what God promises. That's what Christ does. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of peace that we have together in Christ. Our first lesson is Psalm 146. It's often categorized as a psalm of praise, and it is that. But more than praise, it describes God and God's ways and how we fit into that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. 
the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Our gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12. Jesus is in the capital city. He knows that his time is short. A crowd has gathered around him. Our gospel writer even adds the wonderful detail that they are listening to him with delight and then we read. While Jesus was teaching, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour, devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd, putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the good news. I'd like to invite now the kids to come forward to the front row here. And we're going to talk just a little bit about this, here, right over here, about this gospel lesson that we just heard and that you guys are going to be talking about in Sunday school. So, as we heard Novi read, Jesus is talking and he's talking about this really special person. And he calls her a widow. Anybody know what that means? Uh, what do you think? Someone who is not married, and I think it's, it's kind of even, it's, it's, it's a sad thing because they're not married anymore because their husband died, husband or spouse, we would say, died. So yeah, you're right, they're not married, and it's sad because they were married, and you can just imagine how much they're missing that person, right? And then Jesus tells this story. I want to tell a story myself. So my wife, Kirsten, and I were at a church. It's what we do when we go on vacation. I guess it's a hazard. Of <laughs> so, so we're at a church, and we're looking around, and we see this particular stained glass window. You know what a stained glass window is? We kind of sort of have them here, right? A, a lot of churches have stained glass windows that tell stories. They're almost like picture books. And, and we're walking, and we see this particular stained glass window, and it, it puzzled us because it's this really young, I'm pretending like I'm looking at it, you don't have to. It's this really young woman with two really young children, and, and she's putting money in the treasury. And, and Kirsten and I couldn't figure it out. What, what, what story? We, we don't know. So, I mean, there's that story about the, oh, and then it hit us. For that artist, 
And for that church, that's the way they picture that widow. I intended and cursed intended always to think of the widow as an older woman who had lost her husband. But here they're picturing her as such a young mother with these young children and boy, that hit us. I mean, you've gotta be strong and you've gotta be confident and you've gotta be resourceful just to be in that situation, let alone to be there at the treasury in the temple and giving your last pennies, Jesus tells us. Now, I don't know all the reasons that she did that, and I expect you guys are going to be talking about that. But I do know this, that she got it. She got it that no matter what all the problems and challenges are in your family, and no matter what all the problems and challenges are in the city and the nation and the world, the thing, the thing that she's going to keep front and center in her life is her relationship with God. She knows that she's God's child. And she knows that those children of hers are God's children. And no matter what, anybody else thinks or says or how they judge her, she knows. And that's going to keep her strong and it's going to keep her going. She got it. And she knows about God's love and God's care for her and for everybody. Does that make sense? I hope so. And I hope you guys have so much fun talking about this amazing person. Okay, so go to Sunday school and have fun. All right, blessings. Good to see you guys. Now, when it comes to this sermon for us adults, I want to say about three or four things all at once, and I don't know where to begin. As I was saying to the kids, this woman that Jesus is talking about really is something. My guess, my hope, is that we've all got someone like her in our lives, and I pray for all of us that we share something of her sense of identity and courage and grit. Number two, maybe some of you remember this psalm that Novi just read for us, Psalm 146. We had it in a worship service just a couple of months ago at the beginning of September. And good on the people, I don't even know where they are, up in the Catskills somewhere in Washington, D.C., whoever puts these lists together of what the readings are. Good for them for repeating this psalm so quickly. It always, anytime, bears repeating. Psalm 146 does, and especially now in times like these. Number three, the sermon title for today, I don't know if you've noticed it, could sound pretty dire, the way of death or the way of life. Sounds like it could lead to a full-on sermon about the wrath of an angry God or something like that. Or could be part of a Monty Python skit or something. The way of death or the way of life. <laughs> I wonder if it isn't a little bit of both. And I wonder if it isn't what we need about now. And I think the psalm for today and the Bible as a whole would agree. Now, let me add two footnotes to that. First, if you tell anyone that the pastor just said that the Bible agrees with Monty Python, I'll deny it. <laughs> I don't know anything about Monty Python. <laughs> and second, if you don't know anything about Monty Python, Google it right away. <laughs> really important. Fourth, the theme for today's service is risk and restoration. And if you look right at the top of your order of worship, right at the top of the inside 
page, you'll see that misspelling of restoration. Looks like the real word for restoration and the word for restaurant had a baby. <laughs> I wish I could say I planned that, I didn't. The word restoration, as in God restoring our souls, and the word restaurant. I think that's just where to start this reflection for this Sunday, in this nation, at this time. When we planned this service, we had no idea where we'd be today as a community, as a nation, following the election. Would we even know who had won? Would there be violence or threats of violence? So sadly and so reflective of our nation, there were threats of violence on election day, many of them, including here in our city. And thank God, so far as I know, none of them were carried out. And again, so sadly and reflective of our nation, hatred and prejudice and racism are being played out now, apparently in reaction to the election, including those grotesque targeted text messages that our black sisters and brothers are receiving across the nation. So many suspected, or really, let's be honest, we, we knew, didn't we, that whatever happened on November 5th and however it happened, there would be ugliness. Because somehow, the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times in which we are in, at least on the level of media and popular culture and so much political and so much religious, I hate to say, rhetoric, is all about division. And of course, those who spread that division like it just that way, pitting people and groups against each other, picking and choosing who to target, how to spread their hate, and lies that so often lead to violence. The dear and deep and life-giving and wisdom-filled Book of Psalms know all about this kind of garbage. And there's no psalm more well known than the 23rd Psalm. I imagine many of you could quote the whole thing or good portions of it by heart, and thank God for that. At times like these, the psalm writer records, at times like these, in our own lives, in the life of the nation. The psalm writer prays to God, says to God, asks of God, describes God in this way. You, O oh God, you set a table for me in the midst of my enemies. My cup runneth over. You set a table for me in the midst of my enemies. My cup runneth over. Do you get the image? It's of a restaurant. You don't have to be on Metropolitan Avenue. Wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, wherever we are as a nation, as a community, as a church, however bad things are, however tough the going is, however full of worry or doubt or just sheer sadness, or a sense of threat or fear for yourself, for loved ones, for friends, for colleagues. God is there saying, have a seat, take a load off. Here, have a glass of fill in the blank with whatever your favorite soft drink or harder drink may be. Of course, choose responsibly. And God pours out that refreshment for you and pours so much of it that your glass overflows. That's the image. 
That's the image that the 23rd Psalm gives us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the deep, dark shadow, you, O oh God, are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. And then the metaphor changes. You set a table for me in the midst of my enemies. You pour my drink and my cup runneth over. That's God, your favorite bartender, tavern owner, waiter. The portions are overflowing and always available wherever you are, however you are, whatever the times are. God is there. However dire it may seem, our centeredness and our rootedness is in and with God. Listening to endless news cycles and cycling through endless feeds on social media is not, as so many of us know, and yet we can't stop, is not centering and sustaining. When we remember God and our relationship with God, we find our center, we find spiritual refreshment and renewal and nurturing like that glass that the waiter fills and keeps on filling our souls and our spirits fill up and overflow. We are whole. We are well. Even when, and especially when, our nation doesn't seem well and the going is tough. I was speaking with one of you after last week's service about something that we didn't have time for in the service. In that vision from the prophet Isaiah we read last week about God's holy mountain where all are fed, where war and violence and division and hatred are no more, where God wipes every tear from our eyes. The vision says, as it's written in the Bible, in our English Bibles, God will swallow up death forever. And that's serious, deadly serious. But it's also kind of sort of funny because the word for swallow up that the Bible uses is one that's used for the way animals eat. God gobbles up death. And I love what Rob, you said, God wolfs it down. The Bible, or even God, God's self, is having fun with this, as serious as it is. And why not? The purveyors of the ways of death and division and hate, they think what they do is so meaningful, at least for them, and so powerful, who can stop them? And God just gobbles it all up, wolfs it down. Death is not the answer, never has been, never will be. Violence is not the answer, never has been, never will be. Division and lies have nothing to do with the truth. Hell no. What's the truth? God and the ways of God. The God, the very first words of God to the very first prophet there ever was. The God who hears the cries of my people. The cries. That's the God of real life. The God of Isaiah's vision. The God we know and experience and share in Jesus Christ. This woman, this unnamed widow, at the treasury, there in the temple. I imagine she knew that vision of Isaiah well. It centered her. She moved from that deep and strong center and she never looked back. She knew who she was and she knew where she was going, no matter what the circumstance. She was going towards the way of life just like Isaiah, just like the psalm writer, just like Jesus says, I come that you may have life and life abundant, life and life abundant now, living as God's child, 
living as God's chosen, living as one called by God to experience and to share the ways of life. And what are the ways of life? Psalm 146, as Novi tells it and read for us. Happy are those whose help is with God, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who created everything and everyone, who is trustworthy, who feeds the hungry, who is just to and for everybody, who sets the prisoners free, who opens the eyes of the blind, lifts up those who are bowed down, watches over strangers. The word can also mean immigrant in the Bible, watches over them, and upholds the orphan and widow. But the way of the wicked, who peddle violence and division, God brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. No matter the nonsense, the lies, the corruption, the hate, the lies. Did I mention the lies already? Even the violence. Happy. Blessed. It's the same word in the Bible. Pick your translation. Happy. Blessed are those who trust in God, who is trustworthy. The ways of God, creation and creativity, justice, freedom, lifting up those who are down, caring for strangers, immigrants, widows, orphans. Those are the ways of life, life-giving, trustworthy, and life-sustaining ways. Those who peddle in and push all that other garbage, well, as Johnny Cash put it, they can go suck an egg. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good, especially when he says it. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, always, and I mean always, refresh yourself, refresh your soul, sustain yourself, Give yourself courage and keep yourself going and going strong like the prophet Isaiah and like the psalm writer and like that widow in the temple did by receiving and by renewing yourself with God and God's spirit of truth every day. Always, and I mean always, experience and share the trustworthy and caring, life-giving and life-sustaining ways of God and let all of God's happy and blessed people say together, Amen. 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 Let us turn now back to our New Century hymnal, hymn number 448, Take My Life, God, Let It Be. Let us all stand and sing together.
we enter into a time of prayer, just quickly, I want to raise several things, several, several wonderful things, as well as concerns. First, Rich, I'm glad you're still here. Rich became a grandfather again earlier this week. The part I like best is the name of that little boy, Frederick. I couldn't have picked a better name. And continued blessings to, to Rich and the whole family, and of course to you. Second, Jennifer Maurer, Alan and Glenda's daughter and a child of this congregation was married last week. Every blessing to that happy couple. And we've heard it already, and I want to raise Sanctuary Cleanup Day. Your eyes, your sense of smell, or other senses may already have you noticed, uh, having noticed that something happened here. And it did. Uh, yesterday, a great number of members and friends showed up and pitched in to polish and clean and dust and vacuum and lots else besides. Uh, thanks to Kay and Jim March for spearheading that. And to so many, right, right here in front of me and, and throughout the congregation. Thank you all. And part of that all uh, were several Boy Scouts, including Andrew Maines, who is here with his mom, Sonia. Andrew will be celebrating earning the level of Eagle Scout in a special ceremony later today. We ask God's continued blessings on him and on all Scouts, and we thank Andrew's mentor, John Herrick, who's right up there. John, thank you for that and for all you've done and continue to do mentoring and leading the Scouts. Last week, we thank God for the return of our office administrator, Jackie Russell, and it's been great to have her back. And now things have changed a bit again as her medical team has decided that now is the time for a necessary procedure, and that is to happen tomorrow. So we pray for a successful operation and for her return to us shortly. Besides being Veterans Day, weekend and we remember and thank God uh, and ask God's blessings on all of our veterans. We also have a birthday. Is Patrick here? Patrick Lazar? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we wait? Yeah. All right, let's see. Let's see how this all works out. Let's pray. We thank you, O oh God, for all who you are, creator, redeemer, sanctifier, teacher, healer, caregiver, brother, and friend, continue to be all those and more for us, and continue to guide us and bring us healing and wholeness and show us the way. And we thank you, O oh God, for all we are, your children together. Nobody and nothing can take that away. And not only can they not take it away, but we know that our strength, our increasing strength, is ever and always in you and your love and care and guidance and wisdom. Oh God, we pray for our world, we pray for our nation, we pray for our church, we pray for all peacemakers, we pray for all who are threatened, we pray for all who are feeling pain and hurt, anxiety and fear. And we pray for all of our sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, and all who are experiencing illness and injury, including Annie, Dawn, Karen, Jessica, Patricia, James and Annette, Cynthia, Noriko, Karen, Alan, Cheryl, Marcelina, Connie, Sharon, Jackie, Nancy, Anne, Dora, Jackie, and Katie. We pray for all in residential care, remembering especially Hannah, Nafis, and Millicent. We pray for all who are grieving and suffering loss of any kind, including the Filatico family. We thank you for all we celebrate, the birth of Frederick, the wedding of Jennifer, the birthday of Patrick, Andrew's Eagle Scout celebration, our sanctuary cleanup day, and so much else besides, including our upcoming interfaith Thanksgiving service, Thanksgiving pie fundraisers, and on and on. 
We thank you for all we have and for all we are in you. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence or as we call them out aloud now. May light shine on those cowering in the blissful darkness of fear and despair. With God's grace, hope springs eternal. Hear all these prayers, O God, and hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Thy Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. stay standing. I think now's the time to sing happy birthday. There's Patrick. seated and uh, I was in part selfishly going to say but also on behalf of the whole church Patrick that I miss seeing you around so much so I'm sorry for us and I'm glad for you for your new full-time job so we miss you here and we love what you're doing all right now and, and they're moving among us already God calls us for times such as these to reflect God's love and care in and for our community and world, we give to support the vital mission and ministry of this church. We give because of who we are and because God calls us to live in, live out, and to show the way. The ushers are moving among us. Praise the Lord. 
Jesus Christ, here we are, your children, presenting offerings to your church with cheerful hearts. Please accept and bless them so that they can be used to build up your kingdom on earth and spread your love. Aside from these offerings, we also present ourselves as living sacrifice. Show us how we can honor you with our words and actions. Wherever we are, may everything we say and do glorify your name and encourage others with sincerity. Thank you, Father, for all the opportunities to become the channel of your blessings. Please listen to our prayers, which we have said in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, our God of deliverance, the love of our hearts. Amen. Amen. Please turn to your green sing hymnals to hymn number 44, Halle Hallelujah. We're singing verses one, two, and three.
Amen. Before we receive the benediction, I want to point out first that thank you, Sonny, again for sharing your composition of Psalm 146 with us, and you know me for singing along. It's just beautiful. Wow, wow is right. <laughs> and, and want to make sure you all know, we all know that we're invited to coffee hour down in the lounge, which is waiting for us. And now let us receive the benediction as we go out to follow God's light and to receive the restoration and the sustenance and the nourishment and the nurturing that is ours in Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.